Hey yo, I'm Miss Linnea Lark, and today I'm going to share another dust reducing tip to help you keep your studio clean, safe, and the air breathable. Let's get to it. One of my biggest dust problems was clay friendly work surfaces. You see, my art, ceramics, and pottery classes all share the same tables. I used to protect the tables with canvas drop cloths. They kind of protected the tables and they also made for clay friendly work surfaces that the clay didn't stick to. However, the level of dust in my classroom was off the chain, like not in a great way. Not to mention all the time and the cost of regularly cleaning those dirty canvases. It was a nightmare. So I decided to get rid of all the canvases and make all my students wear boards that they could work on. So wear boards are usually wooden boards or even planks that are used to move wet work around the studio without getting damaged. Wear boards can also be used to let work dry out on. And in my case, I also wanted students to be able to sculpt on them. So here are the qualities I look for in a wear board. Number one, it has to be absorbent so the wet pottery can dry out. But number two, it should also be somewhat mold resistant. Can we ever really eliminate all the mold? No but we can do what we can do. Number three, clay shouldn't easily stick to it. I wanted to make sure that the surface was easy to put slabs on and get slabs off of easily so that kids could sculpt with slabs. Number four, it needed to be long lasting. We needed to be able to take a lot of water and general destruction. I mean, I, I do work with teenagers. Number five, it's good to be lightweight as some of these sculptures do get kind of heavy. And last but not least, number six, I wanted to be able to make my own at a reasonable price and with ease as I do not have a saw. I'm not living that saw life. <laughs> I wish I had a saw, that'd be nice. Anyway, I thought about getting more wood boards, but I found that wood boards bow pretty easily when they get pretty wet. And some of these pottery beginner kids, they'd be using a lot of water, you know what I'm saying? So I had a lot of bowed wooden boards that were no longer flat. So I decided to use Dun, 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 dun. Hardy Backer, yeah! One of my students a few years ago, uh, sweet, lovely Preston, he recommended Hardy Backer for the wedging table, which I'll do a whole nother video on, I promise, because it has changed my life. Um, but I knew that I wanted to use Hardy Backer for these new wear boards. So let's get to it. First, you're gonna need to assemble your tools. Go ahead and get a sheet of Hardy Backer at your local hardware store. You can find it by all the lumber. It's kind of heavy, but it's mold resistant and you don't need a saw to cut it. And it's super absorbent and the clay doesn't stick to it. It's just, you guys, you gotta get yourself some Hardy Backer. That's all I'm saying. You also need some two inch blue painters tape, even though it's kind of pricey, just think and get the 3M. Hardy Backer is kind of dusty, so you'll want to make sure you get the good stuff. Trust me, this is going to be for the edges. Grab a scoring tool. We'll use this tool to make marks where we want to cut or snap our Hardy Backer. This is like in lieu of a saw. You can use a box cutter if you're in a pinch, but wash those fingers. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I had a kid go to the emergency room once with a box cutter. Oh my goodness. That was one of the most embarrassing moments of my career. <sighs> Don't worry. I promise I teach blade safety in my classroom. Anyway, and lastly, you'll be needing a sure form shaver to sand all the edges of your rough cuts. It's also a handy tool to use on your ceramics. Now that we got the tools, we got to measure where the boards are going to live. Uh, it's just really important to think about how you're going to be using these boards and where you're going to be storing them. I'm measuring our damp boxes for quarantine. I don't normally give every kid a damp box, but I've been packing all these supply kits to send home with kids. And my like nightmare is that their, their artwork's going to dry out. Uh, so anyway, I want to make sure that these boards can fit securely in the damp boxes. But you're probably going to want to measure your storage shelves and possibly even your kiln shelves to make sure that you're not making um, artwork that won't fit in your kiln. Once I figured out how big my boards needed to be, I made those measurements on a piece of paper and used that paper to mark the measurements on my hardy backer. 
Does that seem like extra work? Maybe. It's easier than using a ruler because I don't have to remember or think about numbers too much. You know what I'm saying? I get all in my mind and I forget the numbers and then I flip the numbers backwards and then I make wrong cuts. So I just mark it out on a piece of paper and then use that piece of paper to make the marks. It's just, it's just my way. <laughs> because my ruler is shorter than my hardy backer, I mark at the bottom and then at the top and then I also make the marks through the middle. For each row of marks, I start on the same side. So all the marks line up on a straight vertical edge. Any leftover space that I don't need or will be cut off is all on the same side of the board. So you'll notice that I'm starting on the right side and making my marks from the right side over to the left. Then I go back to the right side to do the top row, make those marks, and then I go back to the right side and make the middle marks. Okay, okay, we've got all our marks all lined up. Let's score some cuts. I've got a fancy metal yardstick, but a good old plain wooden one will work as well. Make sure the edge of the bottom of your hardy backer is sitting slightly off the table. We're going to be making some cuts, and you don't want to score the tabletop as well as your hardy backer. Make sure you carefully line up your ruler with the three vertical marks. Grab your scoring tool, open it up if it's one of those ones that opens. Place your non-dominant hand in an L-shaped grip firmly in the middle of your yardstick and firmly score the length of the ruler three times. Yes, you need to score it three times. So one and then two and then three. Move the ruler down using your measurements to be sure that your scored lines are straight and then give the bottom three passes as well. Go ahead and score all those vertical lines. Three times each, you know. Once you've got all your vertical lines, flip your hardy backer over so that your scored lines are on the bottom. Yeah, I know, you can't see the lines. You're gonna have to use your fingers to feel for your first scored line. Line it up just slightly off of the tabletop. So you can see here that a lot of this hardy backer is off the table now. Place your hands in the middle of the hardy backer. Your non-dominant hand should anchor the big piece of hardy backer and your dominant hand should press firmly down on the piece you're snapping off. Use your body weight to help you. It really does help. When you get used to it, you can kind of lift it and then snap it down really quick. That kind of helped. Or you can go and get a hammer and lightly tap it. Even better than a hammer is a rubber mallet, but I don't have a rubber mallet and I was kind of lazy. Eventually you'll see me get the hammer out. I do get the hammer out. My wrist started hurting after a while. I don't like giving these old lady excuses, but whatever, use a hammer. Once I've got all my panels cut, I measure the other direction, cut, and then snap those. I sand the edges as I go. Use your short form shaver to smooth the snapped edges and then do it all again. Yeah, that short form shaver is just a quick way to grind down the edges so it's not super jagged. It doesn't have to be super straight either. Just kind of smooth it like a water would, like, like a running river would. Just kind of smooth. Okay, what am I talking about? I then squeegee the table to get rid of all that cement dust that's floating around. If you'd like to see a video that I have on the awesomeness of squeegeeing, go ahead and click the link in the top right corner. Once the table's clean, I use a large wet sponge to clean off all the cement dust from the hardy backer. And then I set the boards out to dry and I layer them kind of slightly so that the air can reach their underbellies. While the boards are drying, I do all the end cleanup on the table and floor and then leave the hardy backers to dry overnight. The next day I got some quarantine help from my sweet parents and my dad helped me tape these edges. It was handy to have them all stacked up in a pile. I somewhat measured the tape by eye, the length of the board side, and then ripped it. Not to be too crazy exacting, but you kind of want your tape to be roughly the exact same size as the board, if not slightly smaller. 
than the size of your board. If your tape is longer than the board, then you will get these little flaps that stick off and eventually those flaps will stop being sticky and then the whole thing will start to peel off. Bummer! So err on the side of a little bit shorter than a little bit too long. I place the tape down with about a half inch border on the top of the boards. So what that means is that you want enough of the tape securely on the top so that you get a solid stick. If you put the tape too close to the corner edge, then it doesn't want to really grip the cement and then it starts to pucker and come off later. So make sure you overlap it really good and firmly wrap the tape down and around the board. Make sure you press the tape securely down everywhere. If it doesn't get a really good stick now, it probably never will once you get clay dust underneath there. So press firmly everywhere. It's been about five months and the tape is still holding up great. Thank you, 3M. My tape did mold a wee bit after I left it in the damp box for a month straight when I went out of town. Oopsie. But the hardy backer looks great. No mold whatsoever, so that's really encouraging. And I could just change the tape out if I want. Now that you know how to make and clean your Hardy Backer wear boards, I wish you all the best. I'm telling you, I love these guys. They're my favorite wear boards I've ever used. I highly recommend them. The only thing that I will say is that they are a wee bit heavy. But as long as they're not too big and your sculptures aren't too heavy, they'll do fine. I also just want to thank everybody for sticking around to the end and for watching more than one of my videos and for all the sweet comments that I get. It really does make a big difference after long, long, long hours of putting these YouTube videos together. So thank you so very much. I hope you guys have a happy day. Bye.